Hi, my name is John Consalvi, and I'm the CEO of Lingua Health. Today, we're happy to have Dr. Brenda Gorman here from Marquette University to talk to us about issues in bilingual speech language pathology. Dr. Gorman currently has an advisory role as the Director of Clinical Services for Lingua Health and Grupo Lingua. We're happy to talk to Dr. Gorman today. Over the years, I've received a number of questions from undergraduates that are considering bilingual speech language pathology graduate programs. Today, I'm going to ask Dr. Gorman a few questions to help those students make a better choice for their graduate program. One question from an undergraduate was, what should I look for in a program? That's a great question. What I would first recommend is that a student sit down and really write down what is important to me. Is it a particular area of interest within bilingual speech language pathology? And if so, they could research which programs really specialize and could offer them a unique experience in that special area. Uh, obviously, there are lo logistics where they want to live, um, large program, small program. One thing I would recommend in addition is to really look at the cohesiveness of, of the program. We know that adults learn from multiple opportunities, repetition, really putting what you're learning in classes to work in clinic. So I would definitely look at the cohesiveness, how the program does foster that. Obviously, I'm very biased toward our program. I think we do a fabulous job at that. We really look out for the students, making sure that they're really integrating what they're learning in class and clinic, and, and vice versa, that clinic informs uh, coursework as well. Evidence-based practice is critical, so I would make sure that that is a strong priority for the program. And I think part of that not only influences what we do clinically now, but really training clinicians to think long term. Things change very quickly in our field, and I think it's critical that students learn, again, not just what to do now here in clinic today, but really, how am I going to evaluate these new approaches that are coming out? What sort of critical thinking skills am I learning in this program to really help me do that throughout my lifespan, as we will hopefully be in this profession for a long time? And many times students ask me, do I need a graduate program with a bilingual emphasis if I already speak Spanish? I think that's another excellent question. ASHA strongly recommends uh, five main things for being a bilingual speech language pathologist. First is Spanish language proficiency or proficiency in the, in the targeted language. So that might very easily be satisfied in certain individuals. Uh, another thing is the normal processes of language acquisition, not only in that first language such as Spanish, but bilingual children. And one thing I know as, um, as a student, we take a lot of coursework even in English language development because it might not be something, although we might speak the language, we don't necessarily know what that development looks like. So the same is true of Spanish or another language. And bilingual children are quite unique in a lot of ways. There are some similar patterns of development and some ways in which bilinguals are, are quite different from monolinguals of either language. And uh, that type of coursework really, we're not, it doesn't come to us intuitively necessarily. It's um, something that we need to um, foster in, in academic coursework. So that's another area recommended by ASHA. Assessment and the ability to really distinguish between what is a, a language difference, what is a disorder, a lot of that comes from our knowledge of typical development, which again, as I mentioned, we might speak English, we might speak Spanish, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have a thorough understanding of what, uh, what normal development looks like. Uh, it, are we able to administer and interpret formal tests, but also informal tests. And again, a lot of those procedures are different, quite different for speakers of other languages because we don't necessarily have uh, tools that are as appropriate for speakers of other languages. We need to make modifications. We need to uh, use different types of scoring. Uh, so there's a lot of that that comes through specialty training. With intervention, ASHA recommends that we are able to administer intervention fluently. Also, it's very exciting with bilinguals, and which is an, a, a new topic I could talk a lot about as well, but um, knowledge of how do we treat both languages if that is indeed the best course of action. And again, there are lots of uh, recommendations that uh, we, you don't get in, in, a, in an English-only focus program, but really through bilingual specialty training. 
And then finally, cultural knowledge. So awareness of how culture influences communication, and it does to a significant degree. So a lot of these things, we, we really do need additional coursework. And I think the best way to answer your question, John, is really the feedback from other native bilingual speakers who have gone through bilingual specialty training programs. I routinely ask our own students and they say, hands down. I very recently asked one of our students, we were only halfway through the first course in our bilingual sequence and she said, absolutely, I think it's critical that all of us know that. And, and to be quite honest, again, she had a long way to go in our program, but even the little bit that she had gotten halfway through a semester already had convinced her that bilingual specialty training is very important. Well, Dr. Gorman, thank you very much for your time. I'm sure that graduate students and undergraduates that are looking for speech language pathology programs and trying to make the right choice will benefit from your words of wisdom. My pleasure. You're very welcome.